going to ask everybody to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Introduce the uh, members of the Zoning Board. My name is Ken Chief. I'm the chairperson of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. This is the Vice Chairman, Bob Adams. Greg uh, Logan is our clerk. This is Jason Quinn, who is a member, as well as Zach uh, Karen, who is a member. And our attorney is uh, Marguerite Mitchell. And Roz is our secretary. Do we have a name tag for you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, did you sign in? No. There's a pen right up underneath there. So, on the new business is to review, discuss, and act on 1670, which is Wellington Street for variance. Let me just uh, explain to you a little bit about this case. This is a case that came back that we heard in 2013. And we initially denied it because it was shaped uh, like a, a pork chop. It wasn't something that the board wanted. Uh, since then, they went to the uh, conservation, as well as presenting, uh, presented us with a different configuration of uh, two lots. And we did indeed uh, vote on that. The uh, petition, and we approved it, petitions, petition signed. The petitioner had one year to register that decision. Unfortunately, their attorney, uh, Mark Anton, who I knew from my prior work, is a very decent guy, uh, retired the next day after this decision was made and did not register with the uh, Registry of Deeds. And secondly, the other issue uh, regarding this case is that the engineer who developed the plans, Otis uh, Dyer, had passed away, unfortunately. He was a young man, 60 years old, I believe. So that's why it's before us, because that expired, it was never registered, so now we're hearing the case again. So basically we're going to be hearing uh, the same uh, facts on this case. We're going to have three members appointed to this. We'll let the uh, petitioner speak. We'll ask questions, and then the, he can respond to our questions, then any of us can uh, ask them any question that they want. So, uh, Greg, can you pick up three members, please? Yeah, I'd like to pick Jason Quinn, Ken Pacheco, and Bob Adams. Just so you know, in this case, it was previously heard it was Ken Pacheco, Bob Adams, so we're very familiar with this case. And it was Peter Cameron, who used to be our chairman, is no longer a member of the board here. This is 1617? Yes. So as you know, uh, Ken, we've, we've heard this case before, so the board is uh, familiar with the case. But you, if you can briefly explain to us exactly what you're doing, and then uh, that way the public can know what's going on. <clears throat> what we're doing is what we plan on doing, is we wanted to sell one of those lots. Um, in future reference, was down the road someday, either my daughter, myself, or a family member for the other. Um, again, it's because of, it's, for farming, it's not a good parcel, but when we went out there to do some, it was by accident, when we went to test for the cranberry bog to find water, it was all gravel, so it was all really good material, you know, good ground to build a house, not for farming. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I'm getting, my wife and I are getting up in age, and we felt that we could sell one, just be help us pay for some of the other bills that we are recurring, and so on and so forth. And what had happened was Mark had turned the paperwork over to Odie to go file at the Registry of Deeds, and I think it was three or four weeks afterwards he died. Mm -hmm. so. so the whole time everybody thought it was filed, and then when we looked, we found out it wasn't. So that's what's pitching back in on? So yeah. Marguerite, do you want to add anything to this? I know you, you worked on this case, you wrote the decision before we have questions. Um, I think just because this is a new petition, we probably should have the information about the hardship entered into the record. Um, you can either discuss it from the last petition and make sure that nothing has changed, or 
in question the, the maybe potentially the petitioner recalls what all the different hardship pieces were um, but I think it's just helpful for the board's record on this case to have that in there and to address just the standards of the variance once again um, you are using the same plan is that correct same that you plan. filed at the last time around nothing has changed okay. and all the conditions that were done on it was all the conditions so there was a condition to that decision about the driveways and lots one yes. and two maintaining a 15 foot wide grass oh. berm and you're fine with agreeing to that again um, yeah, so let me uh, one thing I didn't do was read the, the publication in the newspaper so let me do that now so this was in the, uh, the newspaper, yeah, it, was, it was posted twice, but for the record, let me just read it. Notice is hereby given that the Titan Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 18, 2017, at 7 p.m. at the Dighton Town Hall, 979 Somerset Avenue, Dighton, Mass, 02715, on the application of, is it ILEX? ILEX Corporation, LLC, for a property located, located on Wellington Street, Dighton, Mass, 02715. Shown on Assessor's Map 11, lot number 7A and 81A, for a variance decision pursuant to sections, article section 2, subsection 2620, appendix B, table of dimensional requirements, minimum lot furniture, section 6, definition of a lot furniture of the zoning board, in order to allow a variance to allow a buildable lot to be created with less than the minimum required furniture and to access that lot through lot furniture which is less than the minimum required furniture and this is, was published by uh, Rosalind Grass who was a, a support staff secretary uh, clerk I should say and it was a copy of this was given to the assessor's office building inspector civil commission fire department <coughs> department and it was a copy was also given to uh, gay and gay so uh, one of the uh, hardships my recollection of this case one of the hardships was if you, if you remember was the topography the, yeah, the wetlands it would have been a financial hardship if we did not allow it this wasn't a lot that was created this whole lot was not created by you no. it was, you bought it as is and by us denying uh, you the petition uh, would be causing a hardship for you which is uh, financial but it's because of the layout of the land the topography these wetlands there if mm -hmm. I remember uh, correctly pizza's here <laughs> I'll take a slice of pepperoni. <laughs> so that's that was one of the uh, the hardships. Anybody have any questions? It was also an order of condition issued by the uh, wetlands protection yeah, by the uh, con con. Yeah, yeah, so that hasn't changed. We that can, hasn't changed. We can make a condition if we did decide to approve this, but it's not necessary because they are the ones that have to enforce that. Yeah. So they told they set up whatever conditions we have copies of. The conditions that they have given. Well, Marguerite mentioned that there was a uh, the hardship would be the wetlands on it, and it is in the, in the first paragraph, the first page. Yeah. Do you have any questions for uh, Mr. Rojo? Bob? No. No, sir. Right here. no I'm, I'm fine with it as long as everything is mirroring the original one that we uh, issued in the past. Yeah. Jason? Um, just so I can get the lay of the land since I'm the new the new guy on the on the case here per se. Um, so we're looking at this this, this is here well. and this is the access road coming in that they want to no, the utility access, never mind. Utility so easement. They got fifty feet of furniture on one lot, am I correct? And they're okay. and they're gonna have a driveway going Okay. Ahead. And then they have a second driveway in the other lot. And is it 480, uh, 458, something like that, the other furniture on the other mm -hmm. lot? That yeah. sound about yeah. right. Yeah. And we had a condition before uh, that there has to be 15 feet separation from both driveways. We don't want it to look like it was one single driveway. Right. And we have to put some barrier or something to show that it's not the same. Okay. Uh, That's all in this plan. Yeah. And a good question. Yeah, can, but, uh, can this be Jason is not familiar with this case as, as we are. So this, can this, Margaret, can this, uh, the prior decision be entered into the minutes? That would actually be my recommendation. If it's not already part of the record, we should make the prior decision a part of the well, record. I'll make that motion. It's be entered into the. Is there a, is there a second? No second. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposed. It's entered into the record. Do you have any other questions? No, I do not have any other questions. Zach, do you have any questions? I do not know. Marguerite, do you have any questions? Um, 
I just want to, I just think it's helpful to confirm that um, other than the variance for frontage, that's the only variance that you're requesting for lot two. Mm -hmm. And all of the other conditions of the uh, zoning bylaw dimensional requirements are being met. Yes. Okay. And then my understanding still is that there was at one point in time an, uh, a by right plan approved, an ANR plan for mm -hmm. this property that would have resulted in a brook crossing right. that would be su substantially more impactful to the wetlands than what's being proposed. And that's still the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing's changed with regards to the layout or the no. topography of the land since no, we let on the, the board the dimensions, dimensions. Nothing has changed. No other questions, questions from the board? <coughs> I think you're here. Correct, yeah. Uh, sure. Francis Chris Afuli, 1730 Wellington Street. I border the property right. gotcha. uh, on the western uh, border. So as before, you know, I certainly have concerns with the water table. You know, my driveway is presently sinking based on the water table being high. I actually have a culvert that runs from Kenny's property across to the eastern side of mine. Uh, I have 85 feet of frontage. If I don't know if it shows the full yeah, lot. Uh, my lot looks like a flag. I did uh, was in contact with the prior owner of my property, who actually received a variance to cross the wetlands there. Um, he also recommended that there be a condition with putting together a pre-construction notice associated with the um, Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, that was an organization that plagued him for about three years while he was in the process of building that property based on the proximity to the Coles River. Um, it's actually, it depends on where you look at it. It's considered a, a regular river. It's also considered a, a, a tidal river. And he, that was part of the whole development process when my, my lot was uh, approved by the zoning board to make it go through. So I, I do have concerns of the water table uh, I also have concerns, um, and I, I don't know if it's a zoning or a conservation with, you know, basically now I have a corner lot with, you know, two large driveways and a green space uh, in between. Well, it's already gone to conservation and they come up with a plan. Yeah, right. to, and they recommend that, uh, that we, uh, we approve the variance based on the new configuration of the, the lot and everything else. So it's the least amount of impact that it has on the wetlands, and that was one of the concerns when we initially rejected Correct. the case with the wetlands. Uh, but I'm not sure if, uh, I'm sure they took into consideration where the house would be placed and how that would impact uh, our neighbors. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no issue with the houses. I, yeah. I think, you know, they're great. They'll, they'll be right next to the, the solar farm. But, uh, yeah. you know, my concern is that driveway and the way that my house is situated, you know, am I going to get light pollution with cars coming up and down? Well, based on what the conservation committee, the conservation committee submitted to us before was, uh, it was their general feeling that this was, rather than fill in wetlands, this was the way to access this property that they wouldn't allow us to or allow Mr. Ruger to fill in wetlands when it was accessible in yep. another way. Yep. Now, uh, this has definitely the plan was worked out. I mean, this wasn't done. One one session. No, no, it's just, it was like a year. Yeah. And this was the best plan, and all that's happened here is someone. Be able to yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I understand. I, you know, for the record, I, I want to be uh, here. Everything else has changed. I don't know. I voice my you opinion. Don't still stay yeah. with the same plan. So we need to ask you whether you're in favor of it or opposed to it for the record. Uh, as it is, I'm in favor of it. Are there any other questions from the board? So I'm going to step down as chairperson and make a motion that we approve it. This petition with the condition that the two driveways, one on each property, be separated by uh, 15 feet. Uh, and there'd be some kind of a way to show that they're separate driveways versus um, almost a combined. I'm not sure exactly how we worded it. Unless I believe there's no kind of buffer zone of some sort. There had to be a vegetative bu buffer. Yeah. I believe is how it's worded. You mean like yeah. grass or uh, shrubs? Well, the shrub. Uh, tr well, I think it was really we had to check with the fire department. You know, fire they, yeah. chief, as far as getting you know like emergency vehicles in. Yeah, yeah. fifteen foot wide grass berms. Yeah. What it says. Yeah. Okay. But they wanted some plantings other yeah. than just grass. So it gives everybody more privacy. Yeah. Right. That would be consistent with the bylaws. Yeah. 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 
you know of any place that sells shrubs and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's a place around here that doesn't does that. So I step down and make that motion that there be, uh, and I'll second that there be a special condition uh, that there be a berm, uh, 15 feet berm between both uh, driveways. It's in this pre approved plan. Yes, I just want to make sure that we continue to have that. Yes. Okay. Anyway. What about a berm on the butter side? There is, you'll be off the, how far off the, how close are you? It, the driveway, my motion's out there, but has it been yeah. second? Driveway's going to be about 30 Five. feet. Yeah. I had said that. Oh, okay. The condition, though. So, any discussion? I'm going to continue letting them discuss it. It shows here 46 feet. Yeah. I don't see why they would want to cut that or do disturb that. At one point, it's less than that, but yeah. it, the back part of where the stone wall is here shows 46, it even widens out yeah. to 65. Yeah. Yeah. It's 50 down in the street. This is the yeah. property yeah. boundary. Yeah. 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 You don't want a no cut. Uh, yeah, if you could do a no cut, that would be great. I don't think they'd want to do it. You know, no. there's no reason to do I it. I mean, that's for the wetlands anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, there's no reason to mess with that. So we, does anybody want to make that additional condition then? So that we yeah, have the plan shows that it's clear enough now. I don't know that it needs to be conditioned, but because that's where you're supposed to put you. You got you have to follow the order of conditions you have from, to follow from to conservation. The yeah. Right. So it's already there. Yeah. Any other discussion on this case? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposed. Uh, Jason, could you give us the reason why uh, you're in favor of this decision? Um, it was it was per the uh, the order of the conservation um, the conservation committee, and uh, we have the, the condition for the berm in between the two driveways, uh, and for the hardship too. Can you, Bob? Well, because it was pre-approved prior to this, and the only thing. It was everything had been worked out prior, and they're, they're going to follow the same plan. And it's uh, the board members discussed the petition that's written in this thing. Representative proposed the location of the driveway, confirmed that each lot will have its own driveway, and all of the conditions that we had are, were met. So I see no reason why to not to approve it. Okay, and I'm also because we had agreed to this before, nothing's changed in the lot. It was the lot was created. Uh, way before they bought it, so they had nothing to do with making the lot uh, smaller or anything like that. So that's basically why I'm in favor of it. So. I'm going to have you sign an extension, so give us time to have the decision written up. Okay. I'm going to have you sign it. You need time to save up the money to get it. So, Marjorie, how much time should we? Uh, <laughs> um, when are you meeting again? Meeting in November, 15th. but I'm not sure what the exact date is. 15th. 15th? So the sixteenth then is that what you're saying? Yeah, I should definitely have it for that. Okay, so the son doesn't want to pass it. The son's the one that died. Oh no good. Yeah. Father's like ninety two or ninety three or something like that. Oh my god. When did that happen? I didn't know this. I haven't seen it. 2013? Oh. I didn't know it. Must have been asleep. Yeah, it's just in his late 50s. No, I probably, I just thought it was the father, not yeah, the son. Yeah, no. I, 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 I think that's what you expect, right? Huh? That's what you expect. That's what I just did. I just never had some way to do That's given more time. Marguerite needs to bring you guys up to speed on the phenomenal location. So we're giving it to uh, November uh, 16th. Okay. November 16th. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you also uh, concerned about the, the solar? Is that something you're... Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're going to have a meeting next week for planning board? Yep. Have a meeting, so no, it's what? not next week. It's uh, November 1st. November 1st. Where was this yeah, going? I just, I just talked to uh, Tom Pires, and I had two people here waiting to hear about that, and I told them next... Uh, Next Wednesday at uh, it isn't the zoning board for. Uh, for yeah, no, but they, they thought that it was going to be heard. No, so it, it, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, no, it's not. Ne it's November first. Next Wednesday is conservation. Yeah, next Wednesday is conservation. <coughs> they might have I thought it was to, no. Hong Kong book tonight, but it's when it's that's a commercial solar farm, right? Yeah. <coughs> it goes to the planning board now. Right. Right. Board. But planning board had a meeting tonight that didn't get posted in time, so these. 
people thought that there was. Okay, we're gonna okay, what's next? We're gonna do all business. On the clay case on Pleasant Street, if you remember. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Did I close the public hearing on that? No, you were in a good no. spot, didn't I? Can I this, uh, that's a piece, right? Yeah. Can I take one of these drawings? Oh. Mm -hmm. I just have or just take a I picture. It's the, the same one I think I have uh, the original picture of, so. You want to take a picture of it? Turn around? Yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the same one I had before. Okay. Right? Yeah, I don't need it. This is where you were saying your land was. This is where yeah. I drew the mounts from. So Correct. This, so, this okay. Yeah. Right, this. Yeah. So continuing on with the meeting, I'm going to make a step down from the chair and make a motion that we close the public hearing on the case that we just voted on. I second it. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposed. So the next case we're going to on the old business is uh, the case that we had in Ple Pleasant Street, 15-17. I was a voting member. Bob, you were a voting member, and Greg Logan was a voting member. This is the lot that they wanted to build a house, and we determined that they could not uh, build a house. So we got an email on September 21st saying, I am withdrawing the application, so not expect you to hold a hearing in October. So I want to entertain a motion that we accept the withdrawal of that case. Uh, second. Uh, well, I'll step down and make that motion that we accept the uh, withdrawal from that case. Bob, you said you want a second? Okay, but I want that answered in a minute, too, so in case he, because we're supposed to act within so many days. Right. Yes. So, so before we even, uh, no, uh, I'm not going to close the public hearing until we vote on this. So, okay. so you made us. I vote. I made the motion. You seconded. Any discussion on it? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Members opposed. So I guess I'm closing the public hearing in that case. Mm -hmm. I make a motion. Step down. Make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Opposed. The other question is, uh, he asked that the fees be refunded to him, and in the past we have done that when someone wasn't eligible to go forward. Uh, I personally, I'm in favor of it. I'll make a motion to that effect. Uh, it was a, he was he put the paid the money. He didn't do his research on the bylaws, however, uh, but he did pay the money, and we weren't able to give him a, a positive vote on that case. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make a motion uh, that we. Refund the seven hundred fifty dollars that he spent for the uh, fee for this uh, application. I'll second that. Any discussion on that? A week before we move, look, I have a question. That, that this is discussion. Yeah. There was things brought up at that uh, meeting about what is allowed and what's not allowed in that type of uh, hmm. thing. Can we discuss that now? Can we close this? Close this, and we'll you, discuss yeah. it afterwards. Right? Any other discussion on that my motion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposed. Motion passes. Well, in the zone bylaws, it tells you what you can and right. what you can't do. And I think I... Well, I wanted to address the whole board on, on the matter. Yeah, no, Jim, I, I, I guess... Decision. Yeah. But I researched some of that. With, okay, they so said that a special permit is allowed by special permit. So I went and I researched what exactly a special permit is. And... Uh, it, there has to be some kind of need for a special permit. We, uh, in open space recreation, there would have there are certain things that are certainly allowed, but the things that you have to address is what is the need? Is there a need? Is there a need for it? Uh, and that's well, you have to ask yourselves that whenever that comes up in any other case in the future. Is there a need for it? Because we've had other cases in the past that are not in that particular instance, but. With special permits, but there obviously has to be a need for something. That's all I want to say about that. I'm not I'm following the, the logic on that. I mean, somebody's coming in and asking to build a house and say it was a buildable lot by special permit. What would the, what's the need then? Well, in this particular instance, and when I refer to this, because yeah. it's open public meeting, yeah. Right? Yeah. this particular instance, this man came forward with two 500, uh, two 5,000 square foot lots. And the reference was made to the possibility of a bed and breakfast. Now, is there a need for a bed and breakfast in that area down there? Okay, now you, you face the same decision with a 5,000 square foot lot, 10,000 10, square foot lot, minimum amount of uh, uh, thing right. for it that is, is not frontage, but the minimum amount of bed and breakfast has to be four bedrooms. So then you have to have someone there. So now you come up with five, five house, five <coughs> bedroom lot 
with now do you have parking for the size? Now then the question comes to you, is there a need in that area? Is there something that's drawing that down there? Is there a uh, uh, amusement park or uh, Park uh, yeah. yeah. Park's on the other side of the river. Yeah. I mean, is there a need like when I read, looked it up when I'm in this thing, if it was there wasn't any gas stations in that we already have one, but if there wasn't and there was a need for a gas station, could that be allowed by special permit? Certainly it could. But then again, it wouldn't be on a uh, 10,000 square foot plot. You, you have to have to provide parking and then and throw, throw in storage and st stuff on it. The question I was trying to bring out is there has to be a need for a special permit. In other instances where we've allowed this, the lots were form A lots are larger and they were allowed by special permit, but there has to, there has to be a need. Did I make myself clear? Or am I not, barking up the wrong tree? Here? No, you may Help be. Me out. No, you may be barking up the right tree. I'm not sure, but is it a need that the petitioner feels there's a need? Does who in that the need? interest of yeah, the town? Who determines that bed need? And breakfast in the park. That's the, yeah. some, well, some people might say there's a need for that. I well, guess the, question the question is, do we yeah. do we have they, any bed and breakfasts in then, town? Right. So there well, may, there then may be the thing, the proposal comes in to the size of the lot. Okay, now here on something up there was now open and. The 16 years I've been here, there has been no homeowner's permits or single family permits issued in that in that area. We have approved lots that were pre-existing, and that which it's, it's, it's by law you kind of have to. I mean, there was an issue with that one with the uh, Rogers home where the guy had to go to court, remember, uh, the, and he got the proper... Uh, yeah, but in these size lots, if it wasn't residential, they'd be allowed to build a home there. Right, that's like you know, fifty feet of furniture. Out in a residential feet. area. The rest, but this isn't residential area. No, it's so, open space recreation. So we couldn't even, and we can't change the use right. of the land. So we, we, we have to deny. And it. that was why. But you're zoning, right. zoning was put in in the first place was to prevent the encroachment of the taking away these open space recreation areas. That's why we. Right. That's, that's why zoning that's was why, put in. Yes. So we couldn't give them a house, but there are other things he's able to do there. Mm -hmm. And he has a, he or she has a right to come before the board, petition the board. And then the and question then, comes into need. And, I'm not That's sure what's special permit. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take a look at that, but I'm not, maybe you can help me with this, uh, Marguerite. I'm not sure. No, that's what it says name. here. I, yeah, I, no, I, I, you know, I, I'm not questioning you, Bob. Mm -hmm. so just look here. Get yeah, some yeah. clarification. I think whenever you have a special permit application, you follow the criteria that you have in your bylaw, which talks about finding that the benefit to the town and the neighborhood outweighs the adverse effect of the proposed use, the which the need piece is, that's kind of the essence of what you're getting at, Bob. The, the, so the you need. have to make that finding, and then you have to take into consideration different characteristics, which is set forth in your bylaw. So, I mean, it's a finding that has to be made, but it's um, special permits typically tend to be more um, available for petitioners to obtain approval, provided they meet the different considerations and there isn't some sort of safety concern, traffic, parking concern that are, is in place. Um, I think a neat argument, if you're going to try to deny it based on that, would be that there's somehow, you know, 500 other bed and breakfasts right next door and there isn't, there's something else that would be needed. But when you're really looking at a piece of land that has limited use as it is, you've really got to be um, thoughtful and well, that being and said, that you get to the condition where you go and you look up special permit, okay, in an open space recreation, the minimum amount of square footage is 35,000 square feet, minimum, that you would be able to issue a special permit on. That's what, that, that's what our bylaws say. Because I didn't, I came here tonight not knowing that they were going to withdraw their, their, their uh, permit. But our, our guidelines, if you look it up, I have it here, and it shows open space recreation, minimum lot size is 35,000 square feet. And something like this doesn't... Min minimum lot size for what though? For Single the, family house. But they can't build an open recreation, they can't. But, but, but I mean, so if it was allowed by special permit... No, but it's not though. So it's not? No. It's single family house. Though. Yeah, single family house cannot be built. Okay. A bed and breakfast, boarding so house, are, whatever it may be. There are other stuff that they can come forward. Things like that. It says. I think he brought up the example of, of a boarding dimensional house. Dimensional requirements, yeah, okay? Like yeah, yeah, so yeah. I looked over here under the, 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 the appendix B. The permitted, other permitted uses, open space recreation district, okay? 
Now it shows that there's a minimum lot size of 35,000 square feet. You have to have a minimum of 175 foot frontage set, set back from the street 55. That's in an open space recreation area. Yeah, but they, this, if you have 50 feet of frontage and you have 5,000 square feet of land and it was zoned as a lot prior to we get the bylaws, it's a buildable lot. However, because it's open and recreation uh, space, they can't build any houses there. Huh. So only in the past we've had people fix houses, expand the houses, we've had our hearings. But no more permits have been issued? We've issued no permits to build the house. Right. No variance? Well, I, not new. Well, we can't we build did a house. garage. We did a garage, yeah. But right. I'm talking about... And that was yeah. in the, there were land. other houses. Uh, Bernie Miranda came in with different ones, but there were two lots on an existing dwelling. He did the, the uh, what was it? Uh, what did they call it? Help me out with that. That we okay. had required him to get a uh, as built. And yeah, because it has everything to be so has to be high, so high, high, and all the rest yeah. of the requirements yeah. were yeah. done and built to today's standards yeah. for safety reasons. Yeah. But that was a previously existing dwelling. These weren't open lots. That's the only thing that we've done down there. There was another one further down the river, too, that they built a beautiful house. But it was one existing there already. There were actually two lots. He put the two of them together. I know that one. Yeah. All right. I was just trying to educate us all. Yeah, no. no I'm in favor of that, doing that. Uh, so well, we have new members here. So. Yeah. Uh, so on the old business, case 23-04, the Pines, the first item we're going to discuss is release of lots. Now, uh, they have, if you remember, we allowed them, that we, we agreed to hold two lots and gave them permission to build houses on those lots, but we held those two lots. And it's my understanding, I'm going to have Owen uh, elaborate on that, is that they, they're asking for one lot uh, to be uh, released. Okay. It's that they have a house built on the other lot that they're not asking to be released, and this lot here is an empty lot, and you're, gonna, you're, you're asking to be able to build a house and sell them. So we have to look at the cost uh, to complete estimate. We got a, you, you just saw it, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. Yep. So we got a, uh, so we got a letter uh, dated October 12th from uh, GZA, uh, Peter Williams, is the engineer. Dear board, uh, board members, as requested by the project developer, GZA, Geo Environmental Inc., GZA, has prepared a device cost to complete and estimate for this property. The estimated cost to complete amount is $65,000. See attached estimate and was based on inspection of completed work on October 5th and October 11th. The cost to complete estimate includes construction and survey costs required to complete the work on the approved as well as the 20% contingency. The unit prices utilized in the cost to complete estimate are based on current mass dot average bid price information. Prior to further reduction in the cost to complete estimate, the developer sh should submit evidence to indicate that the Board of the Viking Board of Health has approved a sewage disposal system for all the houses. Make sure you have any questions concerning the information presented in this report. Please do not hesitate to contact this office. You know, I just handed a uh, a letter. That should be read into the record. Also. Yes, I want to read that uh, into the record. So that uh, I ask for a motion to have this uh, letter. From uh, Peter Williams, Anthony. I'll make that motion. motion. I'll uh, step down, second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposed. So we got a, I, We have a letter that uh, is dated October 16th from our attorney, Marguerite uh, Mitchell. I haven't, just for the record, I haven't seen this letter, so. Sorry about that. I didn't hand it to you. Yeah, okay, no, that's. <laughs> no. I'm just saying I, I, I haven't read it. It's okay. <laughs> Doesn't change the letter. <laughs> <laughs> As requested, I have an opportunity to review the above reference form F1 submitted for the upcoming October 18, 2017 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I also have the opportunity to review the October 12, 2017 cost to complete estimate of Peter Williams. I am not in possession of any field inspection reports since the last report I have received for the, for the prior request to release lots, which was reported number 19, dated December 2, 2016. Finally, I again review the comprehensive permit decision conditions applicable to this request, particularly condition 23. Form F1 appears to be properly drafted for presentation to the board. Additionally, the developer has submitted a blank form one that can be used by the board should it determine that releases of lots other than those being requested by the developer is warranted. The developer is requesting the release of 
one lot, leaving one lot to be held by the town. GZA has confirmed that the cost of complete estimate should be revised to $65,000. It is therefore appropriate for the board to reconsider at least some additional lots in the, in the development. At the time I last reviewed this, the cost of complete estimate had totaled $123,000. At this time, since December 21st, 2016, the board decided to retain two lots. As you know, the planning board analysis related to the release of lots from the covenant follows a formula of 90000 to 120000 plus one lot. As the cost of complete estimate is now $65,000, the application of the planning board form would result in one to two lots uh, continuing to be held, need to be held. But thus, it's my recommendation that the board approve the release of no more than requested one lot if it believes that a reduction of $58,000 in the cost of complete estimate warrants a further release of lots at that time. As you know, the intention of, the, of this performance guarantee is to ensure completion of the site work on the property so the board decision on retaining lots should be with this in mind. The board may also want to consider discussing with the developer if an alternative type of guarantee sh such as a bond is or so will be appropriate so that all lots can be released. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. As always, I appreciate, appreciate your continued confidence in my services. Very truly yours, Marguerite uh, Mitchell. Do we have that phone one? I, we'll talk about that very I have a copy of it that was sent to me that I had printed out. I was going to say I do not. Oh, I think you sent it to me. Mm -hmm. I forwarded it, it to you, but I haven't gotten okay. it. Did you bring one with you all? No. no. Okay, no, so you, you can make a copy of this if you want. Okay. Um, you're going to need me to notarize no. this, right? Or are you in the Probably. Yeah, no. Question. For the last slide, obviously. Yeah. So, I can go out my let me now just get the, I want to get the formula there so we have everything. Yep. This is a, do you want both of them made, or are we both, no, are we going with lot 19? That's the one that I gave up. So, the other uh, one was blank. Yeah. That was if we made any changes for yeah, the one Yeah, beyond lot 19, yeah. that was being requested. So I'm going to step down and make a motion that we accept this letter and put it in the record. A second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposed? That would be into anything like that. Before I uh, read form F1, could correct me to the voting members to make a decision on this? Yeah, uh, Zach Kieran, Rob Adams, Ken Chico. Okay, so th this was submitted. I guess we don't have a date when it was submitted, but uh, from the office, well, it's just a form that uh, they filled out. Then the sign, being a majority of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the town of Dighton. This has not been approved yet. Uh, Mass hereby certify that the requirement for work on the ground call for the approval of the covenant contract dated November 19, 2014, and recorded in the Bristol District uh, Literature of Deeds on December 18, 2014, book number 22042, page 19, and settle out a hereby release for the restriction as to the sale and building specified thereon. Lots designated on said plan as follows. Lot number 19 has been released from said covenant, and then if it's approved, I sign it, you sign it, the clerk signs it, and the other uh, two other members uh, will sign it. Majority of the Zoning Board of Appeals of Town. Uh, okay, so, so they're requesting that one of the two lots uh, be uh, released as the lot, my understanding is the lot that doesn't have the house in Actually, it. both lots have houses oh. on them. Yeah, both of them have, we, we, we wanted to get um, before we finish the final coat on the road, we wanted yeah. to get all the driveways in, the yeah. heavy trucks in. Um, so both lots actually have so when frames. I, when I drove in from Pines to uh, Stony Ridge, those houses were already there? You know? mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's right. it was a small, it's, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the lot that the board, so we're at requesting one of those lots be released. The other one has a house on it, but the board was, so it actually is, you know, the lot plus, you know, foundation septic yeah. framed house. Nine yards. Um, our intention, actually, this is the first time I saw Peter's costume complete. Yeah. There are a couple items on there that are done from there, but that's fine. Um, our our goal is to actually get it all wrapped up, except for maybe street sweeping and a couple other things, and then ask the last release of the last lot. Yeah. 
I was at uh, Stony Ridge today, and I noticed that trees were being put in, in pines. In yep. the pines. So, um, and actually, they the weren't on his list, oh, okay. which I'm surprised yeah. because they're not on there. Yeah. But, but uh, they're we, in. Yeah, they're yeah. in. So, yeah. Yep. I, I see things rapidly uh, working out from there. Uh, I know you have a question, but you want me to address it. What's up to you? I'm not afraid. <coughs> I know you're not. That's okay. Why don't you pay us the money, and we'll lease them all? Because we're almost done. It, it doesn't seem. You know, yeah, but you'll avoid having to come back in and I'll tie us all up. Just come up with a... Well, I got, we're going to have to come back to do a release. How much money is Well, right now it's 65000 $65, no. 20, 30000 of which is balanced, which we're going to put in next week. So so we're going to have to... If we release this lot, when it comes to the next lot, we have to have the money hmm. that... Right. Right. We're going to ask for whatever the whatever he tells us the cost of complete is. We're going to be asking. We're not going to release a lot without. But the money. If it's twenty right. thousand dollars worth of work, they're going to have to give us a check for twenty. Right. But unless I think that unless was everything's that done, done and we're going for road that, certification yeah. at the same time so, as releasing a lot. So that's where this was a conversation that, that um, I think I had recently as well, and that's where the the language in my letter at the end comes into play. The condition that's involved in this this. Um, type of performance guarantee was intended to not only have the guarantee with regards to building the property, but also a contingency for the town to have should there need to be any fixes after the property is built oh, okay. out. And at that, that point in time, back when this was permitted a long time ago, it was a 10% contingency. The lot release, um, the cost to complete analysis has continued to decrease um, the amount owed mm -hmm. and had the 10% contingency, contingency calculated on what's left. But we probably, in hindsight, should have held on to that 10% contingency as its own line item from the beginning. Okay. So I'm not positive, and we can certainly research this, as to what the original amount was of the cost to complete estimate, but I'm not sure that reducing this any more beyond $65,000 makes sense because we, the town needed that contingency element to cover. It's approximately a year, a little bit beyond a year past build out. Should there be any changes that are ne needed to be made to the road or to sidewalks or anything else that might happen in the course of, of a typical year after build out? And then at that point in time, the final release would come. So um, I think that it's worthwhile to just explore yourselves with the expectation that maybe the $65,000, if the board tonight releases a lot, you may need to bond that $65,000 or some other type of guarantee needs to be provided to the board. Of course, they want you to take this lot. They're not looking to keep a lot forever. Sure. But an yep. alternative guarantee needs to be provided to cover whatever might be left, yep. even and if you've done the work. And that makes sense. When we get to the when we get to that stage of doing the transition, and like I said, our intention is build the house, have it all neat and done, and go for road you know, mm -hmm. completion. Um, when we get there, I mean, I, th I think part of that is the reason that the engineers go out and review everything to make sure there's nothing, you know, open-ended and, and left on the road. But we can definitely whatever makes the board, you know, comfortable with the situation at the end. Our, the only reason to not do the money is because we're going to ask for it back, and or we're going to ask for so we're going to be done with all those items within another three weeks. Yes, but but my point is that right this amount of or some amount of money it yeah. will need to be provided even right. though you finished the work on that. Right. So that's it's, just not it's, not, it's that no tonight. longer tied did, into right. you've you've technically gotten your ten percent contingency all along. Yep. It's no longer we're tied into yeah, it, you're right. kind of you were prepaid on that ahead of time. So yes. now you might have to do some work that ultimately ends up being, you know, offsetting the ten percent contingency that should have been held. That's kind of where I think you are at. Yeah. Okay. So just to look at it that way, the town yeah, would expect the work to, to be when done. We, when we go for the right. release of the last mm -hmm. lot, that makes sense to some of the discuss. And further on this agenda is their request to have uh, the road become a public road. So there may be some conditions on that, too. I, I know yeah. just speaking to, I think it was the highway department, uh, he's going to want no parking sign put along the, the road because, oh, okay. it's as you know, it's Right, because that is limited on there, no yeah, parking so along the road. so there's going to be no way. parking. Yep. Not just overnight, but it's going to be, you want snow parking. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to police it, but uh, that's going to be... <laughs> but he wants the signs there. Something yeah, he wants like the signs there. So. take place at the town meeting, though, doesn't it? To, to approve it, but we're, we're going to discuss, after we resolve this, uh, mm -hmm. maybe perhaps having a hearing uh, next month to uh, decide whether or not we want to remove 
at least the condition as far as uh, making that a public way right now, it says it has to be a private way. And there may be other conditions. I'm jumping ahead yeah. over there yeah. right now. So on this, does anybody have any questions about their requests who have lot? Um, uh, I have a question. Sure. It's realistically just a typo, I believe. Uh, on Peter Williams' front page, he has a 20% contingency listed. And on his, on his page of uh, holdings, it has 10%. Yeah, the I believe the um, I'll look at it again, but I believe the condition only requires ten percent. I just want that clear. That's sure. all. Sure. Let me just record. double check for you. I think it was condition twenty. Pick up. Great. Six thousand dollars. <laughs> it was ten percent. Okay. The board had the ability, um, if it had been more than two years since the decision, to increase that amount of contingency to account for inflation. But I don't ever recall the board taking a vote. So at this that. moment in time, it's listed in there as a 10% contingency? Under the condition required a 10% contingency. I just saw it. I just wanted to know. That's a good question. Great. Any uh, further discussion right. on that? I just have a question just because sure. I'm kind of new to the 40Bs and yeah. this whole thing. So we release, uh, we can release lots when the cost of the fleet has gone down? Yes. Is that it? Okay. So in uh, Marguerite's letter, she said uh, normally the planning board if it gets 90 to 120 thousand dollars. That's true. That would be two lots. Right. It'd be one lot. That would be the cost for the lot, and then it's an additional one lot. But we're down now to 65 thousand dollars to cost to complete. And he has the right to ask us to release one lot, and we still hold on to the other lot. And okay. We'll, we'll be addressing that at some point. That other lot. Right. Okay. We can't sell it, but it's just a lot 19. Yep. And this particular developer's performance does credit him to so. Yeah. So each lot's basically worth from 65 grand, mm -hmm. give or take, roughly. Well, it, well it's it, got a house on it. It's got a house. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, worth, it's when we're holding. Yeah, we're it's worth a lot yeah. more than uh, the cost of the plan. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. it's the advantage of the town if they decide tomorrow they're going to walk away from that project, which I don't think they're going to do. Right. It's so close right. uh, to completing it, then. Uh, but this developer, if we are going forward, uh, he should be like a model. Model you know, developer. He's done the model very yeah. well. Really well. well, they, this developer, now, we're well, offline here, but uh, this developer, it's my understanding in Easton, he's the, the go to person for any 40Bs. So if land becomes eligible, they go. It's my understanding, it's favored by Easton. And it's something that we may want to consider in the future if these. Or 40B coming into town or something like that. I suspect we may be hearing from them again on 40B. So, but uh, leave that to me. So, uh, was a motion made to uh, approve this? I don't think it has. Someone I'll make, make a motion. motion. Do we approve it? One second. Who's second? Any? You're not Any? voting under the oh. Jason, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, it's Zach. Okay. No, it's me. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. right. It's, it's, it's me, Bobby. Did I write that down? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> KPBA and ZC. Okay. Don't worry about that. My fault. <laughs> I'll second the motion to approve. Uh, Any discussion on that motion? They can write it down, too. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? What's that? Opposed? That's okay. It passes. One day. So, are we... My great, it's just to be signed. I know that meetings are usually half an hour, it's already almost an hour now. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, the three members would want to sign it, and I have my notary, I assume you need this to be notarized, so I'll bring my seal in after the meeting's over and just stamp it, but I'll take the affirmation right now after you sign it. You're um, voting now, huh? Yes. Send this to Zach and don't sign it because you can't avoid it. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Too much flying the last two days. It's a number. Okay, so the, uh, the second case Wait, involvement. Wait, sorry, one second. The three people who signed it was your free act indeed to sign the document? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, going to the second issue that we bring to our attention the acceptance of the road way. So can you tell, uh, number one, uh, do you feel, as a representative of the company here, that this is a substantial change? Mm. I, I, 
I believe at the last you you came before the board to talk about this mm -hmm. that Fisher said it was a substantial change. Okay. So I I would yeah. agree that it is a substantial change with with that. So which means that we made in a previous meeting. Yeah. Right. It's gonna be publicized, the board is right. gonna be noti uh, notified. Okay. We don't have, do we have to take a motion to accept that, uh Marguerite, or we can just accept the fact that he's uh, on record saying that this is a substantial change. Yeah, so you haven't received any type of request in writing from them yet, have you? I haven't received any requests as far as the conditions that they... Just a ver verbal conversation with the, with the developer. Right. So, so we would have to send a modification request. Yes. And then the board would determine if it's a substantial change. Well, so correct? that's what we were trying to... We had a conversation about that. So you can avoid the step of the board having oh, to have a meeting to do that, that if in the request you acknowledge and concede that, that it's a substantial change perfect. so if you put that language into, into the, the request room. we will avoid this meeting and just schedule for a public hearing which i think okay. is what you were probably right. hoping to try yep. to do that sounds good so should at this point now uh, we vote the uh, voting members for this no nope, you don't right because i need to submit the request yep okay to you guys we, and assuming it has that language if it doesn't have that language then they'll have to put it on their agenda yes. to make that decision. to make it no it'll have that but language it makes it. sense for you to put down. that language right in there. correct so. yep. and then at that at the public hearing you'll assign whoever is available at the public hearing you'll assign voting okay. members from that yep. so my question to the board is do we want to have this at our next meeting or do we want to have a special meeting to hear this case I would say next meeting. How's next the meeting's fine with me. We've already everything? had some discussion with the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this will be put on our. Uh, I, I just have to ask you to share because two, two, two potential cases for next meeting, and that's it. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be. Good. So I don't, I don't have a problem with moving it to next meeting. Well, oh, but nothing's been submitted yet. Yeah, it's going to no, depend no, on no. when they submit. But if you had said, "Oh, I know we already have five big ones," then I would have said, "Like, yeah, right." So, what date do we have to? Yes, we'll submit the paper by what date for it to be on the agenda for next the next meeting? October thirtieth. Well, no, because I have to have it in the paper. Um, fifteen days. It's gonna be on the paper on the thirty first. I would need so it by Monday. Twenty third. Yeah, because I gotta get it to the Gazette Tuesday for them to proof and get it back to me for sure. That's next week. Yeah, this is okay. we can do that. that. And I think you want me to look at it. Oh, definitely. Need to call so I'm not, I, I'm I'm not around to look at it, Owen. Put it in the next day. But I won't be around to look at it on Monday. Yeah. Oh, the mother town. Uh, when <laughs> what if are he you, gets it to you tomorrow? I mean, if I gave it to you tomorrow or Friday, by Friday morning? I can't. Friday morning would be too late. So tomorrow, to tomorrow. What? What? by what time? <laughs> by noon? Um, it, that's not going to matter. I'm just, no, I'm looking at my schedule. Okay, okay, all right. I'm sorry, I just have no, a plan trip, so. It, it, it's not a complex one because it only changes one. Uh, changes a couple conditions and there's some waivers that are impacted. That are there are, okay, so then I would need an attorney to review it um, just to make sure we get all of the waivers correct. So I, then I can't promise you that you know, mm -hmm. tomorrow news is a little tight. And I don't know all of them either, so I actually uh, was right, encouraging right. you to have your engineer look at it yeah, yeah. so that you catch all of the waivers. Yep. Yeah. Um, so... So my suggestion would be this makes sense to do as its own meeting anyways. Um, and then you could just schedule it based on whenever it gets submitted and approved. Do you see what I mean? So if they were to approve it, if they were to submit it, you could then reach out to different board members when you, or Roz could to think about here's the day we're thinking of for a public hearing and we could just have. So you're saying not have it at the next. Have right. I don't that's think that's feasible because he given can't just get it. Right. Right. And, right. and his need to review it with different people. So my suggestion is that when you get this done correctly yeah. and it'll be reviewed and in the course of our review we'll confirm with You'll the rest of the board members know. when you guys yeah. are available for a public hearing and you right. can just set up a public hearing and publish it and you won't feel that pressure. Or something re like that. Realistically no that will. sounds like the 29th of November or something like that. The 22nd is Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Right, that's Thanksgiving week. Yeah. So it's week, yeah. a, week yeah. after. That gives, gives two additional of, weeks yeah, time for to get this us in. to get it and then give it to you yeah. and have you have plenty of time. And that to makes a lot of sense. If people are around on the 20th. I mean, the board, As I'm not going to set the meeting. Right now, I don't see why not. Looks right. when it would end up. And we're not going to be voting as to whether we so accept it or we just vote. This isn't just a letter saying there's a lot of people. We'll be voting on the, on the they waivers. They actually have to show the right. that they're going to be requested. Right. Right. 
She'll they need to look at it and make sure they're catching all of them. Right. And then you're going to review it. She'll yeah. Sure they they identify that these are the waivers okay. that have already been granted. So that we know this is where it doesn't meet the town standards. So what's, and then they're going right. to request. The really there's two conditions that reference it as a private road. Exactly. So we we don't have that to ask for modification of two particular conditions. And then any plan, there may not be plan changes. I don't know. Because when your engineer looks at it, they might be able to meet. Then there goes to the town meeting. I, and potentially they change the plan so it's only a town Especially next um, week. It may not involve a plan change. I'll talk to them. Yeah, I'll talk to them. I think the only things that might change is if there's something about the sign-in. Right, if that needs to go on a plan. So I think I'd probably have to... And that's another piece of it that gives us the time. I'll talk to the highway department and say, what? Obviously, we're not changing... No, exactly. Dramatic road things, but what are the things Well, that, that was my thought, too, is some of the little bit of research ahead of time might yeah. allow you to put together a plan if right. there's a slight revisions that you're already bringing it in with okay. with what the town is looking for pre um, preliminary at a minimum, and then they can have a public yeah, hearing to decide if this would be approved no, even with that in place or not. All right, so, Ross, I'm going to end it with plans and get you... An update yeah, sheet no. by the 30th of October. That's still Okay. That's, that's, that's school bus. Wait, 30th? No, it's uh, oh. 6th. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, two weeks oh. from this, this coming Monday. Yeah, so the 6th of November. Okay. Look at that already. This is, you, need to you have it. mentioned some well, you need, Actually, you need to review it. Yeah. So yeah. I need to get it to you then the 30th. That's fine. And then that'll give longer reach here to get back to you. Because you will need to review it and give it back to Ross. And then you can send it out. Excellent. You can only do 96 maximum. And, and yeah. if we don't, then then we'll have If for some reason it takes longer for, right? Then we just sure get to the beginning of the summer. Right. It's not. Right. A, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So, you'll let me so know. So when, when we send it to Marguerite, yeah, of course. Listen, when we send it to Marguerite, uh, well, actually, it's probably whenever she sends it to you. Well, you need to have it by. So, so whenever we send it to Marguerite, we'll talk about the date. CC me on it so I know. Exactly. I'll look at it. You can look at it. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the we can hear the case and. We'll schedule out a plan whenever all this information okay. is all right. Like she's, she's okay with it. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, okay. Under old business, um, review, discuss, and act on recording of decisions with registry of deeds. Our administrative assistant had approached me on this. The case that we heard tonight, the Rujo's case, it was not registered. And uh, she's offered that if we let anybody who comes to the case and gets approved, that she, it's a, it costs $76 to go to the registry and, and put that on the um, deed. And we're asking, we're going to be asking any petitioner for an additional $24 for the time that Ross has to do to go, to go there and register and come back. So we're going to be asking people if they're willing to pay a fee of $100 in addition to our $750 to have the town uh, record. record it. And I, I think it's a great, you know, I wish we could make it mandatory, but we can't. Uh, but it would be great to, so that we know that it's been recorded pro you know, properly and we don't have any issues with these cases here. So I want to bring this up at the next meeting. Uh, we can discuss it tonight if you want, but we're not going to vote on it uh, tonight. I want you guys to, to think about it. How much did you say? It costs $76 anyway to register. Uh, the cost oh, of okay. the, the, the registry of deeds. Uh, but we're asking for an additional $24 to compensate the time that Roz is going to have to uh, go to the registry of deeds and record this. So. We're going to be asking any petitioner, once or if this is voted in, for hundred dollars and offered to them uh, that we will register the case. Okay. So on top of the seven fifty. I see. Yep. Yeah, on top of the seven fifty. Some will do it. Some. Uh, it would only come into effect if it's approved anyway, so they wouldn't have to have, to have it up front. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. If it's not approved, sometimes they don't yeah. give us the money. <laughs> and, and well, that would. I mean, uh, this would be an amendment to your fee bylaw, right? So that would be something I'd put into your fee bylaw as to when you would want to have that money paid by. Before she records it. Yeah, what, what, what she's saying, I think what uh, Marguerite's saying is that we shouldn't be asking necessarily for the money up front in case we deny it. Right. Or maybe you, maybe you do want to ask for it. And it, I, it and that's uh, that's and part of the conversation it. I would have as a board when you look at the fee yeah. bylaw and the language of that. This would be fun to set up, I think. Yeah. Mm. It's just there's so many that don't get recorded. But 
I, I, we're just talking here. That's that's it's their fault. It <laughs> is, but. I don't know that the town should. I yeah, don't but say, for example, they don't record an affordable house and put on a deed that uh, if this is an affordable house, can't be sold as a market house, whatever the wording is. That's, a different thing. That's where the town becomes a vested interest. The town has an interest in that. But in Mr. Rujo's case, we have no interest in uh, whether it was recorded. 40B is different. That's something we have to keep track of and maintain. I mean, not that it, I, I just. Uh, I haven't had time to, to, to think about it. And that's one of the reasons why we can discuss it tonight, but we're not going to vote on it. Because the town really is, uh, uh, how do you call it, separation of church and state? I mean, it's their the individual. But yeah, but but the, she's not going to church after she gets done. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might have to. You're going to wish you did, maybe. Who knows? Well, there's no obligation, but I think as a service to the applicant, just I have no record. to help them out. I, granted, if they don't want to do it, fine, but... But if they do it themselves, they save the hundred dollars. Exactly. It's going to cost seventy six dollars. But how about and this is no uh, attack. I don't, I don't think well, you can really, make it mandatory, can you? No, we can't make it mandatory. No. But how about if we have and this is uh, no disrespect to attorneys, but the attorney says, I'll register it. So they're going to get their seventy six dollars, and they're not going to pay twenty four more dollars to register it. They're going mm -hmm. to have all sorts of fees on it. Mm -hmm. So, what if it's kind of like when you go to a hotel room and you put down a payment for like damage to the room? And then once you check out, there's no damage. You get that money back. Could be refunded. Like once we know it's yeah. once it's been once it's, it's been assured, assured it's been registered. Oh, we see. give the money back. I think that's an accounting nightmare. No, okay. I don't think we have that. We don't have the authority to withhold the money. Give them the option of doing it. I just didn't know if it was more like a guarantee or like a, like an insurance. Yeah, I don't think we can. So I would be it. careful too when you're talking about fees. You have to make sure that they're legal. That they're really designed to cover actual costs the town so just I think mm -hmm. this is something that certainly it's it's a creative idea but I think it's something that we really want to be careful carefully establishing <coughs> and clear there are as much as you may want to provide kind service that's not the role of the town so if it's a service piece that's different than if you're just simply offering a fee and you're you know it's like the abutters um, <coughs> doing the abutters maps or sending in the publication the town does that and obtains the money associated with that. There are some towns that require the petitioners to obtain their own abutters information, mm. and they don't do that for them. So that's where you've just got to make sure that the work that you're doing is clear, that it's something that you're offering, but you're not. your fees are only related to the actual expenses. So in that case, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't go into the fee bylaw. It, it needs to be, a, it, can't, it can't exist other than being part of the fee bylaw, but because it's part of the fee bylaw, it has to meet the standards okay. for what a fee is allowed to be under the law. You can't okay. exceed that. Right. And I liked what Ken said about the 40B. That should be part of it because we, that would be a vested interest of the town to make sure that that was recorded that way. I go through the 40Bs and I see uh, signs for sale. Now, the house has already, it's already been one owner, so yeah. they're selling it. Who's watching to make sure that it's not going to work? So you, I think you have separate fees for 40B projects, and so when you're looking at this bylaw, you might want to also think about how you amend the fees associated with 40B um, point. projects. Because I, mean, I, I don't know that like, uh, having it as a service from the town is. Uh, I don't know. Well, we're going to vote on and the whole board's going to vote on It's not going to be free people uh, to vote on I don't know if I'm allowed to speak. Uh, but one, only one piece comes from the other side. Yeah. As much as it would be great to have Ross go and record things yeah. afterwards, if an engineer gets stuff, something wrong on my end or like a signature is bad on the sheet, yeah. I've had to chase stuff for days, yeah. you know, hunting people down. And it would stink if the town assumed the role of, hey, we'll go register this or record it. Yeah. And oh shoot, it's missing this block and this block and these signatures. Mm -hmm. And now Roz is responsible for running around and chasing down everything to get it mm -hmm. done correctly. Um, no, you yeah. could just you hand it back it to them. That and the forty Bs were the developer's responsibility, and the um, variant special permits were for all other cases, basically, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I believe what you're really typically for 40Bs, what you're recording is just the decision itself. 
or any modification of the decision. You're not necessarily recording. This wouldn't be something the zoning board is not responsible for recording building permits or right. deeds of individual lots. Right. Yes, that's all something. I don't know that the town should be put in that position to do to, to But it's a good point that you raised. Mm -hmm. So a lot it gets involved, really. The right. plans, yeah. Right. I but it's, also, it's been brought to my attention also that if we fail to register this, Case, you know, one case mm -hmm. gets mixed up in the paperwork, and the year goes by. We're liable. We're going to be, we're going to be responsible now because yeah, we, guys gonna sue. We, we messed up. So I'm, I'm we've we've had this happen before with other other ones. We've yeah, had. I, well, I have complete confidence in Roz that that won't happen. However, that's something that we well, have. We don't always have Roz. There's not no, a, there's only one Roz. <laughs> <laughs> She's worth more than a twenty four dollars. I just. I, I think our government is big enough to start off with in the town. I don't think that responsibility, uh, you used the word Marguerite, uh, help me out with this, like, it's, it, uh, it's, uh, you, it's, like it's, not, it's a kindness of the town to do this. I don't think mm -hmm. that that's our position that, uh, that in the town. That, I just feel bad, there's so many, like, little, like Mrs. Chater, like, yeah. she's old and frail and, you know, it's, it's, a burden for her to go to the registry. So I was thinking if we could help them out, great. Well, but if don't I don't want it to put be up a sign, I'll do this and take the money yourself. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so my question I don't know that we, I don't know that we can do this. Yes. <laughs> I don't want it to be any type of burden to the town. I was just thinking that it could be a service to it's the It's only if a mistake is made when the burden falls back on you on them if you make a make the mistake. But I have a question. So yeah. if the fee by laws you said that should they should um Clearly, cover a cost to the town. There's a kindness, by the right? Person. But if if we're doing this and we're accepting a fee for it, it's creating more work for Roz. Is this considered compensating her for her? Is this fee compensating her for her time? So again, this is why I think you want to explore all of these pieces a little bit more. Um, I do understand the re rationale behind this request, but I also think we want to be careful and look into it a little bit further. Well, we tried to do. Well, we tried to get the thing where we would uh, extra, money would be put into like, a revolving a account, but they wouldn't. They deny it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. it just yeah. That'd, that'd, that'd be that'd be cost. The right. town would be paying paying you for the work. It would be okay yeah. if we could get that revolving fund or something like that for yeah. our fees. Any other discussion on this? So uh, this will be on the agenda for next month, <coughs> and uh, we'll discuss it further and vote on public input. Oh, you want to say anything else? Uh, 20 bucks sounds great. <laughs> uh, no public input. Has everybody read the minutes from the last meeting? Yep. Yeah. Can I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve the, the meeting minutes from September 20th. I'll second the motion to approve the meeting minutes. Any uh, discussion on the minutes? All in favor say aye. Aye. And I propose another proposed. I have a question about this particular map. The request was made tonight by uh, an abutter. They wanted one of these. They are available for a fee, am I right? It's public record, so they're entitled to get Not necessarily the ones that we have in front of us, right? But they're entitled. If we want the copies, you have to pay a copy fee, am I right? We can't copy this big. Okay. That's what we give applicants like that. I mean, a butter is a smaller copy when they come sometimes to meetings, right? Because that's normally I request and I, and I did request eleven by seventeen copies, but I just never them. I didn't know if we could give them out. That's my question. Public, public record, record, so I would think if they were extras, but these so, so they will well, be allowed you can to make, make a, a copy. <laughs> they have the right to view it, or you can make a copy. You could if you had to send it out. Um, to be copied or you could copy a piecemeal for them. Um, their fees have changed a lot under the public records laws, so there's a very minimal amount, if, if at all. I don't think one map would actually create a, a fee unless there was unless they needed this actual size copy and there was somehow a fee associated with that that was a lot larger um, in order to send it out to like Staples or something to be copied. Um, but you'd have to explore that. Right. But typically, if you offer it to just kind of cut and paste a page together, 
Um, most members of the public, if that's if they were just looking for the information, might be satisfied with that. You could offer that, and that would be done at no charge under the pu new public records laws. That's laws underneath the limit. Okay, I might be walking to a judge. Nope. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. I know he's trying to get out of it. He did that on purpose. <laughs> You're all set with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be going into executive session. And it's going to be on the chapter 30A, section 21, it's line 3, to discuss 